Welcome back to This Is A Commander Channel, where this is a Commander Channel, and today I'm going to talk about Commander Tough Rules and Cool Interactions, episode 35. Today's episode is going to cover three of the new cards that we got in the Commander Legends Baldur's Gate set that are all mana rocks, but they all care about being used to cast a specific tribe. And these are the three orbs of Dragonkind. Specifically, Carnelian, Jade, and Lapis Orb of Dragonkind. Each one is a three mana mana rock that adds one of the teamer colors to your mana pool, but if their mana is used to cast a dragon spell, then you get a little bonus. So let's take a look at a few interesting things to keep in mind when using these in crazy games of Commander. I first want to take a look at both the green and blue orbs as they both operate in a similar way. So let's read the Lapis Orb. It says, tap, add one blue mana to your mana pool. When you spend this mana to cast a dragon creature spell, scry two. What would happen if you were to use your Kiora's Follower to tap the same Lapis Orb twice in order to get blue blue from it and then use both of those blue mana to cast a single dragon spell? Would you end up scrying two cards once, or would you scry four cards? Well, I'm going to do that thing that I like to do, in which the real answer isn't technically one of the two multiple choice answers that I gave. Okay, yes, in a way, you would end up scrying four cards, but technically, you would scry two, and then scry two again. Seeing as how this series is all about technicalities within the rules of magic and the minutia in the words used on the cards, we gotta care about the technicalities. So yes, if we did the same thing with uh, Kiora's Follower and the green jade orb, using the green green mana to cast a single dragon spell, then that single dragon creature would enter the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it and hexproof. Now, to slightly dive just a bit deeper, what if you controlled a card like Mana Reflection while using these rocks? You tap your Lapis Orb the one time, and it produces blue-blue mana. Then you spend both of those on a single dragon spell. Will you get the single Scry 2, or will you get the two individual Scry 2s once again, you will get the two. If you want more specifics on this, check out some of my earlier episodes, like episode 16 and episode 19, which both go over replacement effects, of which Mana Reflection is a replacement effect. But basically, it's because Mana Reflection isn't actually producing mana, but it is merely altering or replacing what things do when they produce mana. Any restrictions or riders that the original mana-making thing had on the mana that it made will carry over to what it ends up making after the mana reflection alters it. Stay tuned for later in this episode for a bonus rules thingy along these similar lines, but for now, we've been ignoring the red dragon rock. So let's take a look at Carnelian Orb, which reads... Tap, add a red mana to your mana pool. If that mana is spent on a dragon creature spell, it gains haste until end of turn. So yes, the same things that we talked about above apply here as well, using Kiora's Follower or Mana Reflection to end up getting multiple red mana from this orb could be spent on a single dragon spell, but in this case, it would be sort of useless. At least the green one also gave counters with the Hexproof being redundant to have twice, but the red one only gives haste, and have double haste is just pointless. Of course, you could just cast two different dragon spells and give haste to both of them, but let's test something else out. I have out all three of the orbs and a normal bland island. 
And then I tap all four of those permanents to cast my Undercover Operative, and it enters as a copy of my Utvara Hellkite. Will it enter as a 7-7, seven, seven, a 6-6 six, six with a plus one plus one counter on it, with Hexproof and Haste, and then I get to scry two cards. It's a dragon, and I did use the mana from all those orbs on it, so yes, right? Sadly, no. The reason for this is because of something I covered in episode 24, and that is that there are differences between something like a dragon card, a dragon, and then a dragon spell. All three of these things are different things. A dragon card is in your hand, and then you cast that as a dragon spell, and then when it resolves from the stack, it is a dragon on the battlefield. When you read these orbs, they specify that their mana must be used to cast a dragon spell. But if we look at that undercover operative, while it was a creature spell on the stack, it was a shapeshifter and a rogue. And sadly, neither of those are dragons. So the mana wasn't actually spent on a dragon spell, even though that spell did eventually become a dragon creature on the battlefield. Sad, I know. Okay, now back to the mana reflections stuff that we were talking about before. Here is your bonus rules note along those similar lines. You tap your lapis orb while you control a mana reflections, and you also have out a Kennen Bonder Prodigy. Kennen says that whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. This means that you will end up with a total of blue, 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 and then you spend all three of those blue manas, plus uh, mana from a basic bland land, uh, to cast a Nimble Claw Adept, which is indeed a dragon spell. How many individual instances of Scry 2 will you get? Will it be one? Will it be two? Or will it be three? Pause if you need time to read any of the cards in more detail. Now, the answer to this scenario is that you will get scry two cards a total of just two times. Twice from the two blue mana that the orb made as modified by the mana reflection. But then, what about the blue mana that Kennen made? Well, that's the important thing about it. Kennen made the mana. Again, mana reflection doesn't actually make any mana. It just modifies things that do. But Kennen actually has a triggered mana ability that causes him to make a mana. And he does not have anything on him that says that if you can spin that mana on a spell, you get to scry too. Now, for those of you who have managed to stick around through the video this long, I will give you a bonus bonus rules note. Back to the red orb. You tap it to make a red mana, and you use that to help pay for your Utvara Hellkite. But more importantly, you also already have out a Miriam. So, your Utvara Hellkite will enter the battlefield with haste, and then Miriam will create a token copy of the Utvara when it enters. So now, when you go to combat, you assign both the Utvara and the Utvara token as attackers, right? Right? Sadly, this will not happen how you want it to. Like the other things I've talked about in this episode, I've covered this in more detail in a previous episode, in this case, episode 5 and also episode 25, but it all comes down to the fact that the haste given to the Udvara isn't what is considered to be a copyable value. Therefore, the token that is a copy of it will not be able to see that ability on the Udvara. Only the original one will have haste. Well, this episode was originally meant to be like around four to five minutes, so anyhow, that's all I've got for today's episode. As always, I hope that all of you found this video to be entertaining at least, and I hope that a few of you even learned something about the crazy rules in this great game of magic. Have a good one. Ta-ta. Okay. Now for you really super cool people, you all get a bonus, bonus, bonus rules note. 
nothing too crazy. Just know that if you were to ever use doubling cube on mana that you make from any of those orbs, it will not get the perks from the orbs. It's a similar situation to the Kennen thing. In this case, the doubling cube is what's making the mana, just like how it was Kennen making the mana. Okay, ta-ta.